Now, the effective ones are the ones they see in the darkness. They are willing to jump into this ocean of unknown and actually see, um, uh, you know, grab the shadow, grab the uh, shadow by the neck and then interrogate and go, wait a moment, what is it? that it's not working here. And then sometimes, in perhaps most of the cases, then you want to point finger inwardly. You're going to point at yourself instead of others and go, okay, where exactly I can own, I can find the tiniest thread of a string and I can pull it and I can change the course. Even if that's going to be like 2% influence, the, the, the highest achievers of the world are the ones that they actually find the areas that they can be responsible for and make themselves a primary cause of the metis, regardless of the source. Any leader that gathers information and it's wrong, your ultimate decision will be wrong as well. So that's important. And, and intelligence is not in, a, in a, how intelligent you are, but the information gathering that you can attain, it's so important to get it right the first time. <laughs> Welcome everyone. I am Enrique Acosta Gonzalez and I am joined by Ash Cantastro as we begin this new episode. I want to remind everybody that we just finished our Being Framework Leadership Foundation series episode 1 through 14 with a recap at 14. Would love for you to go and visit those and that is where we covered a lot of the terminology that we've used all throughout those episodes so I encourage you to go and see those. Uh, right after this. And in this episode, we're going to be starting to dive into the issues around effective execution of leadership and Ash can. I can't wait to get into this conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Enrique. I'm very happy to be here. Let's jump into it. Well, we all know, Ash can, that there are instances that we run into problems in organizations. A lot of those are birthed through different reasons and executed by people. But we never get to the root cause of why these things happen. And so I want to get into this conversation around why is it that we just cannot get uh, to the root causes of, of our problems? Yeah, yeah. No, that that's absolutely, that's a very, very interesting topic on itself because um, the multiple different reasons often, you know, when when it comes to our lack of inclination um, uh, to, to actually look into the root cause. Like we, we often see in an organization that there is this problem, we see it, we, we think that we know what the problem is, we sometimes immediately want to jump into a solution, quick fix, shortcut, because see, everything is fast paced and we don't have time to wait and analyze and see what exactly is going on. But uh, so, so that is definitely a phenomenon. Like that's something quite common, human experiences, particularly in the workplace, yeah? But then um, how about we go through um, a number of reasons why that is? And yeah, are you, do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. There, there has to be a reason and we, we're going to cover those here today. Yeah, so, so there are multiple different reasons that um, they contribute, I think, in, into us not being inclined to actually go deep and look into the root causes. For example, one uh, is cognitive biases, and there are so many different types of cognitive biases, but let's say, for example, surface uh, level reasoning. So we have this inclination uh, as human beings that we look into a matter, we, we look into a problem that we see, and what we perceive as a typical thinker would be the fact, the truth, that's it. Like we know what the problem is, yeah? The most immediate um, information that we are receiving or we're perceiving, that is the problem. So, or for example, things like cognitive biases, like confirmation bias, meaning that we already have preconceptions uh, of uh, different matters as are unfolding in the workplace or in life. We see things in particular ways. And 
we have this inclination to actually see, uh, seek the evidences um, that they confirm what we already thought. Yeah. So, uh, Enrique, like, do you have some examples that, like, as you work with people, um, the, any examples of surface level reasoning, immediate information to be considered as the fact and acting upon it, or, for example, co co uh, confirmation bias having preconceptions of things. Yeah, I, I've seen this in many occasions. Uh, and even in the military, sometimes you'll get that uh, secondary, co uh, you know, confirmation bias where you are looking for an answer and you find it. And it's so yeah. often utilized in leadership, never digging down deep enough to get to the real root cause. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so another reason is simply lack of resources. Yeah, so sometimes we have time constraint. We, there is these problems, like we're being bombarded with problems. If you're a CEO, C-level executives, or a leader in an organization, you're going to be dealing with tremendous number of problems at hand. And in a way, you are going to start your day and eating problems as breakfast. So. Uh, in the middle of that, in the time constraint, you may not uh, actually find the time to sit there and analyze every single thing uh, as there are happening. So time constraint is a big one. And sometimes you need to, in the world of business particularly, you need to make swift, rapid decisions. And that actually contributes in into this or other resources. For example, you may not have the right people um, uh, in, in, in your team to actually give it what it takes. Like we would say human resources. As much as I don't like this term, we call humans resources, but the work done by people. So sometimes we have constraints um, around, around that. Yeah. Would you like to add anything there? Yeah, sometimes it's financial as well. And, and that's one of those things that time, people, and finances are the reasons why you that, rush through correct. things. You know? Yeah, that, that's correct. You know, sometimes we need, not sometimes, in many of the cases, we actually need monetary capital and finance to, to deal with. That, that's absolutely correct. So um, another one is the shortage in uh, skills. Uh, the skill sets in, within the team. So um, sometimes when we talk about thinking, we take it as a kind of a given. Yeah. So it, it's like everyone can think. Yeah, of course, everyone can think, uh, what, but not with the same quality. And that's a little bit confronting yeah, uh, to, to face it. Yeah, as it, when when a person is a typical thinker, whatever comes to their mind, they will take it as, oh yeah, this is what my thought is. While if you're more advanced in dealing with your rationality, leveraging your rationality, your conceptual structure, and actually think, then you may uh, need to train yourself. You know, no one is born with that kind of ability to be able to tap into tools and processes, mental processes such as comparison such as um, analysis and uh, contemplation and reflections and being able to zoom out and look into the totality of the matter from multiple different perspectives consider multiple different perceptions of the same thing so that you can develop a more congruent authentic or all-encompassing comprehensive understanding of whatever whatever is going on and that requires skills to be you need to be trained in and you need to have the willingness to actually be trained in and and not only you but also the people in your team have you had examples of that enrique that that being a kind of a problem like when it comes to skill sets and yes things? definitely skills and knowledge gaps are notorious for yes. inflicting even further wounds to the, what we're trying to get to the effectiveness of leadership. And if you don't yeah. have the right people with the right knowledge at the right time and place to address those issues, then what you'll do is that you'll gloss over the issues just to get to buy it and it'll never be fixed. Yeah. Yes, yes, that, that's absolutely correct. So another one is um, organizational culture. Yeah, so these are the things that I've taken notes 
organizational culture, and that's a big one. That's a very, very big one. Now, we want to keep the conversation as concise as possible, um, and, but the, this is this is an area we can jump into it in depth. Yeah, you know? we can we can have conversations for days and days, and that's basically uh, the the main interest of mine when it comes to the being discourse in the books. But so when it comes to the organizational culture. Um, for example, like if there is a culture that doesn't embrace authenticity and, and there is this uh, or truth seeking and, and they are so um, inclined to, to be in pretense and or the culture of blame. Yeah? Everyone is afraid of making decisions. Everyone is afraid of actually um, like uh, going deep enough to see what the problem is. Like, so, so many of these cultural um, things in the in the norms in the the, the the organization can actually contribute in this thing that we actually don't want to go down deep there and then see what's going on. Or for example, another tangible one could be um, the culture of short um, shortcuts, finding shortcuts and short term solutions and rapid fixes. The, the focus is short term. Do we just see something? We need to go in an, in a transactional manner. We want to fix it and move on. And and these are the things that are so normalized and internalized within the culture of an organization. And they have uh, their contribution basically into um, us not wanting to go down deep there and then see what's going on, looking into the root causes. Well, Ashkan, you know that when leaders or organizations prioritize short-term results and quick fixes over long-term solutions, they have already started to slide down a slippery slope when they're talking about the effectiveness of the organization. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 So yes, that that's absolutely, I agree with you. So another um, reason is psychological comfort. And that's another big one here because so um, when when you actually when when you're dealing with problems that on itself it can be confronting enough for a person to freak out for a team to freak out yeah and different people re react or respond to fear generating matters or anxiety generating anxiety provoking matters quite differently it depends on the health of the relationship with anxiety fear and other moods and um, so if, psychological comfort would be like for example like the individuals within the team or yourself as a team leader let's say you would be overwhelmed and you deal with cognitive overload uh, or for example um, you're dealing with anxiety let's say yeah and and different people have different ways to respond to anxiety provoking um, situations some may dissociate as a uh, coping mechanism. They may try to like evade the problem, just cover it up instead of actually going there, daring with courage and assertiveness and responsibility, actually diving into the unknown and then wanting to see what's going on down deep there instead of being freaked out and not want to face the darkness. So that's another thing that is quite important for us to consider as one of the major reasons why we don't actually go down deep and then see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's harder to go and confront the possibility of deep-seated and systemic issues that can be yeah. more psychologically burdensome than addressing the surface level system. And that's why a lot of people don't get into it. It takes a lot of work yeah. and a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, so, so, and that has to do with many of these different aspects of beings, um, of a human being, like, for example, like your relationship with confidence, how you're going to be dealing with uncertainties and hesitations and doubts, um, how you're going to uh, jump into the unexplored territories. Yeah. So, because sometimes the shadows of these beneath these problems are quite monstrous and ugly looking and you don't want to actually face them now the effective ones are the ones they see in the darkness they are willing to jump into this ocean of unknown and actually see um uh, you know grab the shadow 
grab the uh, shadow by the neck and then interrogate and go, wait a moment, what is it that it's not working here? And then sometimes, in perhaps most of the cases, then you want to point finger inwardly. You're going to point at yourself instead of others and go, okay, where exactly I can own, I can find the tiniest thread of a string and I can pull it and I can change the course, even if that's going to be like 2% influence the, the the highest achievers of the world are the ones that they actually find the areas that they can be responsible for and make themselves a primary cause of the medis regardless of the source so that's another one yeah absolutely and you know the simplicity and control is an, a, a different a thing that can be considered in this as we are addressing uh visible issues it can't create a, a misleading sense of control and pro, uh, progress because these solutions are often uh, simpler and easier to implement. At times, yes, yes, at times like that. Okay, so another one is um, systematic issues, yeah? So so sometimes the, the problems that we're dealing with are actually quite complex uh, and and as we touched it on it, like it actually requires a lot of expertise and and mastery around how to navigate and how to look into them in, in depth and, and identify the interconnections between all of these different problems because what may appear on the surface in a certain manner, but then when you go down deeper, it's going to be quite different, but then it requires that kind of a skill set and, you know, um, the, it, it requires something technically for us as a team or individuals to actually the, unpack or unravel the complexity of the matters. So that would be like another one, I think. Yeah, well, a lot of the issues that people face are just not immediately apparent. Right? You, you, you have to dig in deeper. Sometimes you have to get some professional assistance, uh, but the gist of the matter is that good leadership is interested in getting down to what these root causes are, and even though that some of them are systematic issues. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's really interesting. Like I often talk about the invisible, yeah, you know, in general in life, and because we have limitations to our perceptual structure, yeah, you know, we don't see everything that there is. And um, sometimes the things that are so apparent in our face, we don't see them ironically because they're too close. It's like when you you have your um, uh, finger like so close to your eyes and because of the closeness, you can't see it. And, and there are times that uh, it's the opposite. Um, you may see things that are not even there. They're not even real. We can be delusional and, 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 uh, and also, the, uh, we can we can have misconceptions of things, yeah. So there are limitations to our perceptual structure and our conceptual structure or our rationality. So and now, as we went, went through almost, I think six um, different reasons uh, from, from cognitive biases. There are many different styles of cognitive bias. It was beyond the scope of like what we could have gone through in in this uh, video. Uh, but yes, yeah, so there are so many different types of uh, cognitive biases from there all the way to the complexity of the matter, all the way to the um, um, psychological comfort or lack of resources, lack of time, finances, and like the right people in the team to actually go through uh, and look into the, but so, so they're all there, but at the end of the day, still life sometimes even, I would say even harshly demands us to know and have accurate, authentic conceptions of different things that are going on. And that manifests itself so clearly um, in, in the workplace when it comes to organizations and teams. And um, as you, you said, I do also agree that uh, the, the, the leaders, the effective leaders would be the ones that are despised the lack of inclination of human being to actually go in and see what the root causes are uh, and we can fall prey into um, this uh, surface level reasoning and cognitive biases as we said a couple of times and the rest of the reasons we've gone through but still 
uh, the, the, you know, like the effective leaders are the ones that they still value and prioritize truth seeking um, and, and going down deep, they're developing authentic awareness of whatever is going on so that based on the, um, the, the validated uh, information, they can make their effective decisions. Yeah. Yeah. The true leaders will dive in and differentiate between the visible problems and the root causes if they truly want effective leadership uh, to, to reign under their charge. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, was, I was watching this uh, interview with Jeff Bezos. Actually, Jeff Bezos was talking about it, um, was talking about this, uh, this thing that we as human beings, we're not tr truth-seeking um, uh, creatures being. And um, we are social creatures and being. And, and uh, sometimes telling the truth and being authentic uh, it actually doesn't work. Uh, and uh, so we have this inclination not to actually go in and see what really is going on. And but then he was talking about the importance of that culture of authenticity and truth telling within organizations. And so and, and that's quite aligned with my studies of like highest achievers as I was working on the Being book and I've seen how important authenticity is. Now authenticity doesn't only, I mean, I don't want to reduce it only to truth uh, telling, but basically that's a very important manifestation of that or um, like how uh, the one's relationship with authenticity can manifest itself in, in the, our behaviors and the results that we produce. Now, one more thing I would like to actually bring up that as we're talking about making the invisible visible for us, yeah, um, is, um, and, and, then, and then based on that, then we're going to make the right decisions. Sometimes um, it's really, really hard to impossible to make data-driven decisions. So we often say that, but, but I would like to uh, pause a little bit here and then bring our attention to this thing that we don't always have validated information, validated knowledge so that we can make decisions uh, based on. And, and that's exactly why we have the word intelligence. Yeah. So intelligence, it's like there are certain part of the data we gather and the information that we have or knowledge that we produce that are, you can say, 100% validated. But there are also some parts that uh, we cannot really validate it. We don't have the evidences. We don't have uh, the validation tools. Or sometimes we don't even have the time to actually go in and see that, uh, the, to validate them. Now, intelligence is this word that we use um, for the aggregation of the parts that are validated and the parts that cannot be v validated 100%. So you, you aggregate that, and as a leader, you're going to tap into that and you're going to make your best decisions based on that intelligence that you've gathered. Yeah. Because even the, I think it was Obama in, in one of the speeches, he says, he said that even, you know, no matter how smart you are, if you have the wrong intelligence, if I'm paraphrasing it right, it, no matter how smart you are, if you have the wrong intelligence, you're going to make a wrong decision. So that's also very important. What do you have to say to that? Uh, how does it land to you? Yeah, no, it's important to have the proper information to make the greatest assessment or decision as a leader. Uh, any leader that gathers information and it's wrong, your ultimate decision will be wrong as well. So that's important. And, and intelligence not in, a, in a, how intelligent you are, but the information gathering that you can attain. It's so important to get it right the first time. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Enrique, like we've, we've gone through, like we started talking about the, uh, us human beings, especially in the workplace, in organizations, companies, uh, in teams, that we sometimes, it happens a lot, it's a common phenomena, that we don't uh, necessarily go and then look into the root causes and to see what exactly is going on. And we wanted to look into it and then see why. We, we've gone through a number of reasons uh, uh, in this 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 episode, now 
what do you think from there? Like now, now we know all these reasons and everything. What what do you get out of it? You think? Uh, what should we do in a sense? Yeah, no. What you do is you look at these reasons. You look at the different things that we've brought up in this episode, and figure out how these will help you become effective in a, in your execution of leadership. A lot of times, it is these reasons why we don't progress and. We may have touched on the one that's plaguing you. And so what we asked is from now is that dive into these, explore them. How have you been acting upon each and one of these uh, subjects that we've brought up as potential reasons why we can't get to the truth of the matter or to the bottom of the root cause of some issues? And we, we, we hope that you're effective in your leadership by them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what I would like to add at the end is, yeah, so, so we often talk about awareness, awareness being intentional consciousness, not not a kind of consciousness that the base level consciousness that we all have. It's like, you know, of course, there's a sound and you're going to hear it. Of course, there is something going on. You you look at it. I mean, you look at it, you see in a way. But um, going beyond that, uh, bringing intentionality into it. It's like when we talk about being conscious of your consciousness, it's like not only hearing, but listening. Yeah. So the, the difference between hearing and listening, let's say, as an example, is like when you listen, uh, you bring intentionality into it. You direct your consciousness at something. You want to become aware of something. And, and there, your relationship with authenticity, uh, with congruence matters. Um, and and you want, not only you want to see and see through, you, not only you want to listen and listen carefully, but actually you want, you want to gather as congruent as possible information and knowledge um, to how things are, the easiness of things. And that actually really matters as we discussed it so much. So I want to reemphasize that how important authentic awareness as an approach, as an approach of uh, our approach in examining different pieces of reality matters. Um, and, and while it seems a little bit philosophical or technical, the thing is on a daily basis, this is the real tangible challenge that we see both ourselves and others that we work with is like there should be if they want to be effective, if they want to constantly contribute to the um, integrity of the organization and 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 going towards the, the objectives that the organization or the team is setting for themselves. It's extremely important to actually look into the, um, the identify the, the constituent parts, the shadow side, the parts that are not really working and and not being pretense and be vulnerable and be open and and want to know what exactly is going on because if you don't identify the problem problems properly then um, it's very unlikely that they are going to be resolved by themselves so and and there is this pattern there is this axiomatic pattern that if you don't address a little problem today it's going to grow to a much bigger problem later so it's better to deal with the baby dragon in a layer rather than letting it to grow and then you need to be dealing with the smokes and fires so um if there is anything you would like to add uh, enrique before we wrap this session yeah just want to thank everybody for joining us as we've covered this uh issue of visible problems versus root causes and the, the number of things that you delineated in this conversation is uh it's great to have you all with us uh during this journey and we have plenty of more to share. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Enrique, and thank you, everyone, for being, being with us. I'm now better to go and then deal with some of the root causes of the problems we're dealing with. See you.